because I don't really have a lot here, I'm making one of my most favorite and basic recipes. It's called Aussie pasta, which is a little bit random, but basically my mom's Australian and this is an homage to her. It's the first recipe I ever created and sort of just one of my comfort foods I make when I'm at home. So let's get started. I like using chicken sausage because it's a little bit lighter and leaner and I like it in this pasta because we're using so many fresh ingredients. You can really taste the sausage, but it doesn't overpower any of the vegetables. So now here's my sneaky way of making meatballs, which is kind of cool. So basically you take your fresh sausage and you pinch the bottom of it about an inch above where you want to make it. You push it down, boom like that. And you end up getting about a one inch diameter meatball, which I think is perfect with this kind of pasta. You don't want big sandwich size meatballs. You just want little ones that you can pick up with your fork. And my favorite part about using fresh sausage is the meat, the spices, everything, the seasoning, it's already done for you. Now that I'm done with my sausage, I have to go wash my hands because they're really dirty and I just handled raw chicken. So I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan because we're using chicken sausage and that doesn't have a lot of fat in it so it can stick to the pan if you don't grease it first. The oil's hot, I'm gonna add my meatballs. So now I'm gonna get started on my vegetables and first up is the onion. So this is what I learned and it's to me the fastest and most efficient way to chop an onion. First you slice it in half tip to tail and then I I chop off this little top nub. It's uh, kind of where it gets all papery at the end, like a tassel. Next up, I peel the outer layer off because no one wants to eat that. So you just take your knife and horizontally slice into it. And I like to do this three times to get really even slices. So there we go, we now have three sections for our onion. You turn it around, and here's the fun part. It comes out perfectly sliced for you. I love this. Great, and that's it. So we've taken our meatballs out of the pan and I drained off some of the fat. So to get started on the onions, I'm gonna add my butter. It's just a little bit sort of to lubricate things and obviously butter is the best, so it gives a really delicious flavor to everything as well. So the butter's melted and now I'm gonna add the onions. The trick to caramelizing or browning onions is using a larger pan and the reason is that when you use a large pan, onions have space. If you put them in something a little bit too small, liquid is gonna leach out of them and they're gonna steam and you don't get that wonderful brown flavor, the sugar doesn't really caramelize, so when you use a larger pan, that's what you gain. You season as you go and if you season as you go, you don't have to do a lot of adjustment at the very end and you get a really lovely mellow savory flavor rather than a punch of salt that you throw in at the end. So here, I'm gonna start with just a pinch. And salt isn't really complete without pepper, so pepper goes in as well. And we're going to saute these onions for about 10 minutes or until you get a nice brown coloring to them. They don't need to be super caramelized, just enough that they have some really good flavor. Now it's time to get started on my tomatoes and this makes the base of the sauce. These tomatoes are gorgeous. I'm so glad I swung by the farmer's market this morning. So the way I chunk this is I just slice it in half, half again, and then half again. I like these ones because they're really big, really juicy, and they have a really nice high acid content, which means lots of flavor. So the onions are sauteing. I'm gonna get all of these other vegetables over so I can finish my sauce. And now we're gonna add some freshly chopped garlic to the mix. Next, we're gonna add the zucchini. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. You can see that the zucchini is starting to get a little bit soft but not mushy, and that's exactly where we wanna be. Next, we're gonna add the tomatoes, and we're gonna be cooking this for a little bit longer just to make sure it gets a nice saucy texture, but still stays a little bit rustic. Gosh, I would eat this just like this. <laughs> We've added a lot of tomatoes here, so I'm gonna add another pinch of salt, and the salt will also help the tomatoes break down. When you're cooking pasta, the trick to making sure that it's not gonna clump together and that it cooks evenly is use a very large pot and lots of water. You don't need to do anything else to it, just give it a stir and if it has space to move, it'll move. And we want our pasta to be al dente, which in Italian, al dente means of the tooth. So you want to be able to use your tooth to eat your pasta. Just nice and firm, not hard, not really soft or mushy. 
it's time to add a final finishing touch to the pasta sauce. I like to add a big hit of fresh basil and let it cook in the sauce just to give a lot of really good flavor. So if you can, grow your own, but otherwise just pick it up from the market. The difference is huge. So the pasta is perfectly al dente. I'm gonna drain it off. So everything's ready to go. And the nice thing about this recipe too is the meatballs are perfectly juicy because they've been cooking in that sauce. I love cheese and when you add cheese to this, I always add it before the other toppings because then it gets to melt and it gets gooey and delicious. And then I love putting freshly chopped basil on top. And I also love to add a little drizzle of olive oil. It has such a good flavor and I think it also really makes the plate look beautiful. It just catches on all the pasta and makes everything glisten. Great, so that's all set. All I need is my dinner guest now. Hey Laurel, are you ready to eat? I am so ready. Okay, calm down. I don't know where we're gonna sit, but I think we'll figure it out. No problem. <laughs> 